In his book, Special Phenomenology, Powerful Psyche and Symbol, Carl Jung said that the sea is the favorite symbol for the unconscious, the mother of all that lives. Why do I want to talk to you about this today? Well, by the time that you are going to watch this, it's going to be the 23rd, the 22nd of June. I'm going to upload the video and you might be watching it on the 23rd. Here in Spain and in other places in the world, we celebrate San Juan, St. John's uh, Night. The, the Eve is the most important celebration because of the bonfires, fireworks, people get together and the 24th is the, the main day. Why is that important and relevant to this channel, to us, to you, in your process of self-development? What has it got to do with the Great Mother and all that? This is what I'm going to talk to you uh, about today. I want to create this awareness of how in your self-development process, the routines, the solstice, the changes of the equinox, the, the solstice, as I said, and rituals that people follow at certain times, how is that relevant to your own growth? Where are the darks, the dark sides, the light sides? How do we connect all that with Jungian psychology? And why this is important for this channel as well? And why am I wearing pink if I am a goth? <laughs> I'm not that kind of goth. Anyway, so yes, today what I want to talk to you is invite you to uh, deep dive, have a take deep dive into your unconscious, uh, connecting day, night, water, fire, these binomials that are so important in, in the gothic and see how that dynamic actually affects you and what that has to do with your unconscious mind. If you are someone who is in a process of self-development, you love the gothic, uh, you celebrate rituals, you like, uh, somehow you're connected to the environment or everything that happens in a very deep level, you might even do rituals to change your look, then this video is for you. Hello Gothic friend, this is Alice and you are in Gothic Land. Welcome to episode 14 where we're going to talk about the importance of the unconscious uh, connected with the Gothic, with your self-development and the Great Mother. Why is this even relevant to you? Well, um, there are a few things and I'm going to start by talking about this book, The Great Mother uh, by Eric Neumann. It's a book that is for me has been very relevant. I'm rereading it. It's very important to reread your stuff. Uh, some people are already telling me, you know, rereading Dracula sometimes might seem a waste of time, but it isn't. You always find new things. And this is what's happening to me when I'm rereading rereading books like this one. Um bearing in mind that Eric Neumann was a man of his time and he was a man, and that the great mother is female. And I'm not here to do a feminist speech. I'm here just to create awareness, whether you're a man, a woman, a unicorn, I don't care. As long as you have a brain, it's important that when you have questions and you want to go back in time, you're going to end up in the origins of everything. And the Great Mother is one of those origins. In Jungian psychology is an archetype. And as an archetype, as any archetype, it has positive aspects and negative aspects. And obviously, the Gothic is where uh, the negative aspects is where we're going to find the Gothic. But before we go into that much detail, um, the celebration of St. John's Day takes place in many places in the world. Here in Spain, um, I thought it was only a Spanish thing when I was younger. That's probably because of lack of uh, information from the school and uh, the fact that we were all informed about prehistorical things uh, from a very different angle like survival, how to harvest, how to farm, how to look after animals, how to bring bring children in the world and all this but we were never really talked uh, spoken to about uh, 
the cultural rituals in depth. I think that part was missing. At least that's my perception of when I was learning. And I think when I see my children now, and it's something that I keep saying, and I keep repeating many times, when I see that there's like a lag, there's a big gap of cultural information about why we did what, why our ancestors did what they did, and how that is still perpetuating nowadays, you know, and, and just as simply as asking, why do we celebrate this? And making people look for information, using their critical thinking, that would be super fantastic, but it's still not happening. So that's why, one of the reasons why this channel also exists. So if you are Danish, for example, uh, you will be burning fabric witches on a fire, if you are from Spain, Croatia, Lithuania, Latvia, Sonia, Russia, you might be jumping over bonfires and that would be to prevent evil spirits from affecting you during the year. So we see similar rituals in Halloween. Pay attention to that. That's interesting. If you are from Wyoming in the USA, you will be throwing red soil over the bonfire while making a wish. Um, if you meet around Stone Age, you'll see thousands of druids there with you if you're also a druid and you'll be collecting flowers and plants for example there's a plant called saint john's plant mm, that's interesting if you want to know more about these things i have two magazines from two different years on my webpage you are gothic no sorry my webpage gothicalis.com yes and the magazines are you are gothic but you don't know it in sweden um yes it's where you do the collection so you collect the flowers and the plants uh, like the San John plants in Sweden people from Romania girls from Romania dance in front of each other and they make flower crowns to throw them into the water and they guess the future if you're Russian or Ukrainian or as I said before in Spain we tend to swim in the water at 12 o'clock at night I don't particularly because I'm giving me the jeebies but uh, washing your face with salty water and uh, making wishes and we gather some people gather around the, the beach with the little fires and they jump them and they eat and they have fun yeah sometimes people go overboard with that but the core essence of that is to uh, leave all the bad energies and the negative stuff behind and become a bit happier in the future people I, I mean there are all sorts of rituals I, I remember as a teenager I did something with water in my bed and I had to write a, a wish and it, it tends to be like love wishes and desires that you put under your bed on a paper and then if it opens it happens I can't really remember the ritual but there are many things and actually this also inspires the stories um like the one I have in the magazine that I haven't finished but it's so powerful Water and fire both have similar meanings. If you think about water, water is where we come from. We come from the from the maternal womb where we were swimming in amniotic liquid. And then we are born and we're having to fight. We've been in this comfortable space and now all of a sudden we are on our own. When we use fire, we use fire to cook. We use fire to b burn things, but also it's rebirth. That's why we have the, the phoenix uh, symbol of this rebirth and it happens with fire yet the fire can be very destructive but also can be water so if you think about it the symbols around them they are also positive and negative such as archetypes which is something that eric neumann used to say in a fragment of the book of the great mother that i just shown you before it says that similarly to archetypes and i'll tell you in a minute a bit more about archetypes symbols have a dynamic and material component that guarantees awareness in the individual and serves as an energy transformer. That's why this is important to us. This is a time of the year for transformation. And at the same time, our molders of consciousness, and this is great for what we do here, because we want to become aware. We don't want to be conscious all the time, as in just running with our consciousness. We also want to let that to rest and at night let our conscious talk to us or in other times and activities. And doing these rituals and following these more collective ancestral ancestral um, activities and connection with ourselves, we are also helping our own internal transformation. It's important to have that balance. Uh, well, when we're talking about archetypes, I find that kind of difficult to describe them. 
but archetypes some people understand them as something quite fixed something that you know when you think about the hero it's almost like an astral card when we think about our star signs we tend to to say well this is not true this is rubbish because this is not happening to me i'm not like that and that's actually uh, the wrong approach because um, that's just like a guideline and the archetype is an energy innate ancestral kind of pattern that we all have and we have more than one archetype it's not just the one and depending on the time where we are we might be run our psyches like an energy that runs our psyche depending on on the time and sometimes there can be various archetypes influencing each other in the same moment so it's like this kind of a mobile and fluid energy that we all have and being aware of them is very is very important and very interesting because it can help us in our processes of transformation and self-development and we actually see this what is the connection with the gothic and with literature you might think well for me it's very clear because there are a lot of test texts that uh, show precisely the negative side of certain archetypes and the gothic is so archetypal you know we have the vampires we have witches we have all the ghosts we have monsters of all sorts of things and types and they represent part of who we are as human beings so that's why i truly believe that it's very important to analyze and be more aware of why we do follow these celebrations for example in not only in this time of the year that if you think about it san juan is opposite straight away is it the exact opposite to halloween so in that sense both serve as portals and uh, so if in halloween we have the, the veil lifted because then the the living and the dead cohabit we have a similar thing in um in St. John's Day. And, and, and a very clear example is what happens in Stonehenge with all the Druids and the change of, uh, well, the, the summer solstice. Again, we have portals. Uh, Stonehenge is a type of portal space where people go there with the energies and they welcome and they do their rituals. I'm not, I don't know exactly what it's like. I have heard stories about maybe nowadays being a bit too packed and some people becoming so extreme that might not might have lost a little bit of the initial essence but for you to get the idea this is what we get with this other portal in this year so why or what can you actually do to become more aware and to be um in this transitional uh, point in your life we're always in transitions so whether you think you're more or less if you're static or you think you're static my friend you might have a problem so how can i actually help you with this awareness and what i want to do with the video is kind of an invitation so i want to invite you to first uh, recall your dreams that's super important recall your dreams write them down but that's not just in for now for the summer solstice uh, but for the whole of the year um, and then take that to a professional to help you decipher what they mean or you can talk to me um, I do have courses uh, I'm creating even more courses and I have in the webpage gothicalis.com you will see that um, we explore the psyche in a, in a quite long well quite long it was a um, six month seven month course that is now recorded and you can have access to and uh, where we talk about the exploration of all the archetypes how we connect the gothic literature with the unconscious um how does all of this influence every, your, your every day how can it help you grow if you're a writer it's going to give you more in-depth and more insights on your characters and how to create better stories and more balanced stories as well but uh, what's important here for you today is that when you take note and you kind of pay attention to your own conscious that is normally talking to you at night time but then also during the day it has moments where it can sneak through is uh, that necessity of balance that we have and that the, the unconscious uh, help us with so what i want to do apart from you being aware of your dreams is also to investigate yes they have this critical this curiosity this critical thinking and looking for why do you celebrate what you celebrate also i will be very interested interested to know what is it that you celebrate in your country what is it that 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 you do to to welcome the next part of the year and um and how that influences you 
what are your personal influences and beliefs and how much of what you believe is being affected by the world outside and the rituals, your family rituals, or whatever it is that, that you might be living in a different place uh, to your um, hometown, your, your mother, um, yes, your, your home place, and um, comparing one ritual with another uh, beliefs as well. That is very enriching for the person. So I would like to know more about this if you wanted to leave me some comments. So as I said, uh, realizing how all this can affect you and or how it doesn't affect you is very important. And also write down what are the positive aspects, what are the negative aspects. Also, what is it that you read during this time of the year? What does that say about you? I know that I have a tendency to read things or to be, well, yeah, I'm more kind of um, in my own writing space. I'm more prone into writing about mermaids. And for me, they are very... Uh, very interesting because they are representatives of of the great mother and I've done some research on them and I've done I keep doing research on the great mother and in fact a lot of the essays and a lot of the um yeah essays that I've been writing and applying for calls for papers that I still haven't they're not they they're not published yet but they're there they all go around the Grey Mother and uh, analysing it from the Gothic angle, the Gothic uh, lens. And that's very interesting because it says a lot about my own motherhood. It says a lot about me. It says a lot about my project here with the Gothic and, and this channel and what I do outside the channel. And uh, it's amazing how the transformation starts taking place. And we're in constant evolution. So... This is the purpose of the video, really, to, is it like an invitation now that we are in this uh, new transition, that you analyze all the lies, the shadows, that you talk to me. I'll be posting things on my forum as well. Every week I'm going to try to post something until the forum starts rolling. Uh, you can talk to me privately. We can collaborate, just throw ideas. But also let me know what is it that you do at this time of the year. How do you live this moment? What are the darks and the shadows and the lights and the shadows? And uh, what does it mean to you? And what are your... How do you want to change uh, for the next uh, for the next cycle? What are you expecting? What is it that you're going to choke in the bin? What didn't work in the past? And what are you expecting for the, the next uh, moment in the next cycle? Yep. Yeah? So with that said, I think that's all I wanted to, to point out. That uh, again, these videos are a little bit more natural. I rather leave all the um, putting together the videos with the music it takes me a long time and I think that you have enough videos here to see how I work in our private sessions so I'm leaving all the big productions for courses I think it's only fair that people who really are interested in the courses get all that amount of work uh, here is more talking to you it's a video podcast as well so I get to talk to you more directly and you can leave me your comments as well. What is it that you are reading? What is it that you would like to see here? How would you like to collaborate or work? What are the parts of information that you're missing that you would like to know? But I think it's, uh, as I said, it's only fair that um, I go back also to the origins of um, the channel where there were no really slides or music behind it it was just me talking and telling you about the gothic and i think maybe that naturality i was kind of losing with the with the videos as i said there's the dynamic of the courses with more images i mean i love the visuals because i think they can express a lot of things and uh, without so many words and also i think it's uh, as i said it's, it's a different space and also thank you all for making this possible we have now 400 subscribers it's 400 of you i know that not everybody follows every week and um, but i'm glad to have you here i'm glad of the interest and uh, that's what keeps me going and i will invite you again to check the forum because we can talk we can talk further there and then that's the place also to support the channel uh, you have different tiers that you could um, use 
to get more access as well to courses, to webinars and private things that I, I do there. So having said all this, I hope that you have a lovely St. John's night. If you do not practice, if you don't do any rituals, maybe this is the time that you could start doing something like that. Investigate, write down, explore your thoughts. That's something I can tell you enough times is so important and let me know what is it that you're reading as I said before so hoping to see you very soon have a lovely end of the month I might see you before yes on the 29th I hope to post another video we're going back to the weekly posting and until then have a very gothic summer solstice and enjoy whatever is it that you eat and you do so let me know share comment follow do all those things to help the channel to evolve and i'm talking too much see you very soon bye bye take care